right, so I am going to walk you through the daily UI challenge that I've been working on, and today's prompt is to design a credit card checkout screen. Um, the prompt said that you could do either desktop or mobile. I'm going to go with mobile, um, and here we go. So the first step in my process is to start wireframing, and for me that means that I need to figure out what all needs to go on the screen. Um, so I am going to, let's see here, I'll zoom in a little bit. I'm going to say that we need, um, okay, we need an order summary. Because if you want to, if you're going to check out, you obviously are going to want to know what exactly you are going to be paying for. Uh, so some sort of order summary. We also need to obviously collect the payment details. Um, and what all does that include? That includes... That includes the card number, that includes the expiration date, what else does that include? That includes the card holder's name, and that usually includes some sort of security code, which I always forget what that is called, maybe CVV, something like that. Um, let's see, security code. And then I usually like it when I'm able to save a card. Um, information for next time so that way if I come back to the site I don't have to do it again enter all the information and then obviously we need some sort of submit button and maybe some sort of navigation for the rest of the process because checkout usually does not include um, just payment details usually there's shipping and some other stuff in there so we'll include some sort of navigation for the rest of the process um, and okay so that is what we need to get on the screen and if we make that bigger so we can see it once we're at full size, let's start seeing how this page can lay out. So, uh, I don't know, order summary seems like it'd be an interesting thing to have at the top of the screen. So we can have, oh, that's dark, let's go for a lighter gray. Um, we'll do an order summary here. And we'll do payment details down below that. Payment details. And I like to usually just kind of start with chunking out the screen and not getting too far into the details. Um, so that's why I'm doing these big blocks here and just kind of labeling them. Um, so we'll do payment details there. Um, some sort of save card thing should I think come below that because obviously after you enter the details is when you'd want to save it. You don't want to save it before then. Um, and then at the end of the page we'll want to do some sort of button for uh, submitting. So let's do submit payment. Or actually if you, if you think about it Usually there is some sort of review page. So let's do a review order screen after that. And um, we'll turn that white so that we can see it. Oh, that went for blue, let's see. There we go, there's white. So some sort of review order button. Um, okay, so let's see, we've got the order summary, payment details save card, submit button, and we need some sort of navigation. So if we're going to say the next step in the process is to do a review order, then let's say previous step in the process is shipping. We can say update shipping. Um, and then obviously when you are checking out you want to know where you are. So it probably would make sense to have some sort of logo up here at the top. We can center that bad boy. Um, and then I guess it'd be nice to be able to exit the payment process if you decide that you don't want to uh, check out anymore. So if we say some sort of back to cart link of something we forgot about. Um, I don't know, it seems like a natural place. There's usually a pattern. There's if there's patterns established for things um, out in the real world, then I don't I really like to break those. So um, I think a back button is usually at the top left, so we'll stick with that pattern. 
and not reinvent the wheel with that one. Um, so here is our wireframe. Pretty straightforward, really basic, looks awful. Um, so let's start to kind of iron out some of those details. So if we've got back to cart link and a logo up here, order summary, um, let's think through what goes in an order summary. Um, so if we have order summary here, um, let's see here, we'll want to, we'll have that as a header and then we can do a subtotal is usually included in order summary and we'll right align this and we'll include some sort of dollar amount um, and then below that is usually the shipping with another dollar amount and then there's always tax for better or worse um, with another dollar amount and then the total which we can I guess let's see let's say we want that to stand out in some way shape or form so we want to make it stand out in some way shape or form so that these are the details and this is really what we want users eyes to go to first when they're looking at this order summary so if we do that Got our order summary up there, and now let's kind of see what the payment details section could start to look like. All right, so we've got our header, and let's see, we've got, we need these four things for payment details. So if we come up here and just copy this, because it's always easier to copy and paste, um, we need the card number. Um, and we don't want that. We want some sort of input because we don't know what the card number is yet. So we'll do some sort of input. Let's see, we'll turn this white. And maybe give it a small outline so it looks more like an input. We'll make it go the full width. Okay, so this is starting to look a little bit more like a screen that you would actually see in production. So let's see, let's see if we can start trying to make this look like it uh, is actually part of a brand and not just black squares on a white screen. Um, so if we see here, I think for the summary order summary in order for it to look like it is part of a unit. I'm going to put a bordered box around here because we want it to stand out as a, uh, a, a chunk of information but we don't want it to be the first thing or necessarily the primary thing that users look at. So let's see, we will Let's see here. We actually, I think I'm gonna make the, let's do this. Let's change the typeface of all of these. All right, so we'll deselect all the shapes. And we'll say we want this to be, let's go with Din, why not? It's a nice typeface. Um, okay, we'll pick Din light. And let's see, the headline for these, I think I'm actually gonna make the headline for order summary since we don't want that to stand out as much. Let's do more of like an H5 or four or something kind of style where we make it less prominent. We can go with bold. 
And let's make it a little smaller. And that way it's still obvious that it's a headline, but it won't stand out quite as much. Um, and then we'll make, let's lock these rulers, command two. We'll make this, let's see, make those all a little smaller. Let's go with 16 for that copy. Oops. And we'll reduce the line height there. And then we'll bump this guy up. I think I'm going to, let's see, make this type size the same, but we'll make him a little heavier. And then I kind of like this total being larger so that it's obvious that that's what we want users to look at first. So I'm going to center align those and bump that up a little bit. And that gives us a little bit more screen real estate as far as the rest of the screen goes because we don't want order summary to take up all of it since it's not the most important thing on the screen. Um, so we'll do that. Um, and then with payment details, the header, we do want that to stand out a little bit more. So I will just kind of bump that down a little bit. We'll go to, I don't know, 28. Seems like a reasonable size. Um, we'll give some nice breathing space here. And then let's see, for the card, let's see, not the card, the payment details themselves. Pull that up a little bit. Um, and it feels a little silly to have such a large input for both the expiration date and the security number. Um, so I think I'm actually going to, let's see. Let's see if we can save some space here. And we'll actually bump these over and do more of an inline input style. Um, so if we get those lined back up with our content ruler and then let's bump these down a little bit. Go down to 16 so we match these. Um, and we will reduce the space between them so that they feel a little bit more like a unit. Get a little more breathing space. Perfect. And now that I'm thinking about it, we actually might want to add a header up here so that you know where you are as a whole. Um, so let's say, let's call it checkout. Seems pretty reasonable. Um, and let's put that right there. We'll line it up against our content ruler. Um, cool. So we will do that. Move this down a little bit. Give our buttons a little bit of breathing room from the bottom. Sorry, I'm just playing with spacing here now. Okay, um, so for payment details, I'm still not loving how this is laying out. So if we make these inputs a little bit less intrusive, obtrusive, what's the right word? Not sure. Um, and let's actually do more kind of more of an implicit input rather than having it be this giant box. And we'll say, Let's do a rule between each of the fields. We'll get rid of these boxes. And let's even out the spacing here. Distribute and Distribute. That didn't do anything. Okay, let's do. Oops. Bump that up so that they're centered vertically. All right, we'll do that, and then let's make this type size match. Oops, not that. That. Um, and I guess if we're wanting to save, let's change the wording on this. Save this card for next. Um, and we'll ch we're changing the language on that so that it's even more explicit what a user is going to be doing instead of just saying save the card info. 
making it obvious what are you saving it for. Um, not making the user guess on anything is really the ideal. Okay, so we've got a little checkbox because you want to be able to toggle this on and off. Um, and we'll make it a little bit more obvious that it is a checkbox. We'll start by start with saving. So there's our check. And we will center that vertically and horizontally. And just because we're going with the rounded corners everywhere else, let's do make this check a little softer, maybe a little heavier. Um, okay. And so let's group that so that they stay together. And let's left align or right align it. Line up my directions. Right align it. Um, and let's see. What else can we do? This is feeling a little tight up here. Let's play with that a little bit. Pump that down. Um, and then we'll bump this down to accommodate for that. And let's see. Let's, let's put in a little bit of content here. So if we are going to be, let's see, we'll bottom line these or baseline them. And cards, usually when you are checking out for security purposes, they are only showing you the last few digits of your card number. So I'm going to stick with that pattern for security purposes. Let the user know that we are a secure place to be giving their information to. And so let's do distribute these guys. And then cards are what? Usually four sets of four digits, so 16. So we'll do three sets of dots and then only expose the last set of numbers. And then we'll distribute these for even spacing. Bump that out. Okay, so there's that. And then for expiration date. Base align those, and we'll just put in some fake date. What? We'll say October of 23 seems like a decent date for this card to expire. And then we are going to put a card holder's name in there. Let's see, card holder, cardi, Nick, card holder. Why not? And then, okay, so for a security number, that is also usually, what is that word? Hidden, I don't know, whatever it is. It's normally secure. So let's put that over here. And that's usually only three digits, so we'll get rid of one of those. And this is feeling like it's a little bottom heavy, so let's bump it up a little bit. And we'll center align those guys. Not one, this guy. Maybe? That feels decent. Okay. Um, so there's that. We've got our information in there. And let's do our buttons now. So Okay, so we've got two buttons down here, but they both are standing out a little too much. Um, they're competing. So since this is really what we want users to do is to move forward in the process, um, let's decrease the importance of this one. So let's do that by um, reducing the background color. Kind of lighten that up a little bit. I guess if we do that, what we'll want to change this type color back to black. And 
that to black and I think that that reduces it a decent amount. Let's uh, go one shade lighter on the background here. Seems right. Um, okay, so only thing we haven't touched is this fictitious logo and this back to cart link. So let's do the back to cart link. We want to, um, in order for users to exit the checkout process, if you're thinking from the standpoint of the store that we're at, we want the exit process to be uh, probably the least important thing on the page. So we're going to make it a little bit smaller than our body copy. Um, we're going to keep it the light font weight because that um, decreases importance as well. The weight of the type. Let's see here, we'll go maybe, we'll stick at 14. That sounds good. Um, and then to make it clear to users that this is kind of going backwards in the process, let's add a an arrow in here. Let's see, let's go for, oh, wrong one. Let's go for this guy. We'll go a little bit heavier and we'll rotate it so it's actually going in the right direction. Um, let's see here. We will center these guys up and make that a little bit closer so it feels like a unit. And there's our back to current link. I think we can make the language even shorter so that it gives less, it takes up less space and therefore less in the hierarchy. Um, so let's do that. That seems reasonable. Let's line that up with our content ruler. And a little bit more white space there. Okay. That looks good. Okay, so we've got our wireframe. Bump that back up a little bit. Um, and then, okay, so we've got our wireframe and now we are going to kind of put a brand on it. We've kind of started to get this look and feel with the softer corners and the rounded, um, or I guess the pill buttons and the rounded corners here, but let's start adding some color. Um, and I want to keep this pretty clean. Uh, let's see, what color do we want to do the stroke? Let's do... Let's do this. Why oh, do we want to do this logo? Let's do something really simple and basic. Just some shapes as a placeholder. So we can bump that up, stick with the soft edges. Let's make an X. Copy, paste, and rotate. I've got our X. Um, I don't know. Let's do a little bit more. Something that's slightly more interesting. We can do scale this back, we'll do two X's and then scale, we'll keep our, uh, let's go down a little bit, that looks good, okay, just nest those in, that seems like a reasonable logo for our fictitious store here, so if we want to pick some colors, I'm just going to go from the palette to keep it simple, uh, Let's make the orange the primary color. Mm -hmm. We'll do green as the accent. Seem good? Cool. Okay, so we'll group those and let's drop that in as our logo here. Make it a little bigger. Sound like a client, right? Make the logo bigger. All right, so we've got that in there. Center that up. All right, so if we're gonna go with this orange and green color scheme, let's see. Let's make the stroke on this a little heavier and this orange color, yellow orange. We'll give ourselves a little bit more space since we're up in the, the border weight here. Oops. All right, so if we've got that, let's do, let's come down here. And I don't think I want to go crazy with the colors 
This is something we want users to look at, so we're going to call some attention to it with the orange outline. But the inputs, I don't necessarily want to go crazy with uh, styles on these rules or anything. Um, so let's see here. Let's do, let's call some more attention to the actual information here. So let's back these guys up a little bit and do a kind of a gray for our input labels. And that way the primary focus is on the content that is in these payment details. Um, and so moving on to the saving card, let's do a, we grouped those, so let's ungroup those, ungroup, and let's do the green for our check, mark, our check box here. We'll regroup those, group. And we'll tuck that up there a little bit more so that it feels like it's part of the payment details. And then our call to action, let's see here. Let's do our call to action in the green color. Let's do more of a, let's do this Kelly green. I think I like that better than that lime green. Okay. And then the last step is to kind of fine tune this. So let's actually bump this up even more. So it still felt like it was competing a little bit. Um, and I guess to add a little bit more direction for what these buttons are doing, let's make it pretty clear that this is a process and we're stepping through that. Um, so let's add an arrow to the button so that people, so that users are able to understand that we are stepping through a process here. I shouldn't say understand. They can understand it without the arrow, but this makes it clear. Okay, and then copy paste. We'll add that arrow to the call to action button. And we'll make it white so that it matches the type. Ungroup. Tuck that in a little more. And we'll center these guys up. And realign. Awesome. And there we have it. We've got our checkout screen. Um, the next step in the process, I've been doing these and kind of trying to uh, post them to Dribble as I complete them. So the next step in the process for me is to compose the shot to get on Dribble. So I'm going to get rid of this and start composing. Um, so our, let's see, like that. Our screen here is not going to just be on this white artboard, so I am going to create a white background for our screen. Oops. And we will, let's see, group this. And let's change our artboard size to be 1200 by 1600. That's the, oops did that wrong, 1600 by 1200. That is the size that, uh, the largest size that Dribbble recommends. Um, so we're gonna stick with that. And let's get this uh, phone screen a little bit smaller so that it can fit on here. Um, we can get rid of these rules now too. Um, and okay, let's put a background on here so that the it's not bleeding into this giant artboard. So we'll send that to the back and let's do a fill of that green. We will lighten it up a little bit. Cool. And then we'll lock that so that we don't keep moving it. And for this phone screen, I think I'm going to uh, round these corners as well. Since we've been doing that with the elements in the UI, um, we'll kind of keep that coming with the uh, dribble shot as well. 
And since we did that, the logo and the cart actually feel like they might be a little high on the screen. Um, and let's make sure these are centered because I don't think they are. Yeah, they are. Okay. So give ourselves some white space with that up here. And since we did that, let's bump the rest of this down so that we get some breathing room for that as well. Um, and then we can regroup. Let's actually bump these down a little bit. We can regroup and let's see. We want to make sure these are center. All right, now we're covering the artboard and we are centered. So let's go with that. We'll relock this background. And then in order to add some interest, let's do, let's do kind of a pattern here. Do that. And then to make this one stand out a little bit more, let's bump him up in size. And we can even add a drop shadow to that. Um, so we'll go to effect, stylize, drop shadow. Um, let's do zero offset and let's make him bigger. And let's actually do something besides black because that is a little heavy. So let's do maybe a dark green. Let's check that one out. Mm, make it bigger so it feels more of like a blur. Maybe bump down the opacity a little bit. Feels decent. And I'm gonna bump him down a little bit so that the white space in the grid here is more equal, a little bit more even. And there we have it. There's my dribble shot. I uh, hope you enjoyed it, and we'll see if we can do this again soon.